Hi and welcome back to another video. As you can see, I've been shopping CPUs. Those are all Ryzen 5 7600 CPUs. The reason why I bought so many of these is because we want to compare the individual CPU differences. So all of them have a different internal resistance, different voltage they run on, different power consumption, and the differences might be bigger than you expect. We did this kind of video already back then, like several years ago with a 10900K, which was basically a top of the line CPU and already there we saw differences of about 20% when it just comes to for example the power consumption and typically because this is a like low end CPU for this specific socket the differences might be even bigger because this is basically the garbage CPU for this specific socket. So yeah, that's what we want to do in today's video. In total, I bought 12 CPUs, one I already owned, so we have 13 to compare. That is the test setup which we used. It's a Crosshair X670E Hero by ASUS. We're running an ASUS 280 AIO with fixed pump and also radiator fan speed. We're running export profile on these memory dims 6000C30. And that's pretty much it. Unlocked power limit. And apart from that, the CPU is just running full out stock and an RTX 4070. We will start now looking at Cinebench R23 results. I performed three runs with each CPU and then took the average values. So for example, the core voltage or like power draw and temperatures, everything are the average values across these three runs because you might have some variance between an individual run and I want to even these out. In the chart on the X axis, you can see the serial numbers of the CPUs. On the left in the Y axis, you can see the Cinebench score. I also want to point out that the Y axis, so the Cinebench score, starts at 10,000 points. So this might skew the look a little bit, but I think it makes it easier to digest and visualize the differences. This will be the same in the following charts as well. On average, we can see 14,194 points. And the majority of these CPUs show only a very little tolerance to this value with about one to 2% difference. But we also have a bigger one with about 4% performance difference with 13,611 points. And with all these charts, you always have to keep in mind that we're only looking at 13 CPUs. And that's kind of on the edge to call it somewhat scientific, but I mean, you would have to look at like 100 or maybe even a thousand CPUs to really get a bigger or like better picture of this because there are certainly CPUs that are like better or maybe worse. The reason for this big difference in performance is obviously the different core clock that will be achieved with the different CPUs. And now you will see the core clock with blue. On average, we see a multi-core clock of 4,983 MHz through Cinebench R23. Three of the CPUs can constantly maintain a clock of 5,075 MHz, whereas one of the Ryzen 7600 is only constantly running 4,825 MHz. That is a difference of 250 MHz, and that also explains the performance differences and why one of the CPUs can only achieve 13,700 points. Obviously, one of the main arguments why you would pick a CPU is usually the performance you get for your gaming. So for example, how much megahertz and then FPS you can achieve with this CPU. But also other factors are usually important, such as temperature and of course also power consumption. In this chart, we are now switching to the power consumption during the Cinebench R23 run, now visualized in yellow, while we still see the CPU clock in blue. Interestingly, the CPU which performed the worst also shows the highest amount of power consumption in this chart with 126.4 watt and the CPU with the lowest power consumption will draw 16 watt less and especially percentage wise that's definitely making a bigger difference than just looking at a Cinebench score where we saw a difference of only 4% but now we're talking about a difference in power consumption of 14% and that's definitely making a difference in a review. The power consumption will be a main factor for your cooler choice. You might go with the box cooler or something else. And if I would ask you which CPU might get the hottest, I guess most would call for the 126 watt CPU. Now, if we look at our chart, it will look a lot different. The 126.4 watt CPU on average only shows a temperature of 84 degrees Celsius, which is also literally the perfect average among these CPUs. If we look to the right, there is a CPU that pulls 13 watt less, but it will be warmer by 4 degrees Celsius. And if we move to the left, like the fourth CPU from the left, we see an almost identical power consumption, but this CPU is 10 degrees Celsius colder. 
and it shows only about 78.9 degrees Celsius. The reason for all these different values which we see are in manufacturing tolerance. It's the same if you CNC mill a part, you use three times the same part in a CNC mill, they all will, ha will have different dimensions and it's the same with the CPU. So you have your traces inside, you have your transistors inside and all of them will be affected by some kind of manufacturing tolerance which then affects like different internal resistance, different power consumption, different voltage required and so on. And you might also remember the interview which we did with an Intel engineer quite recently and he also pointed out the factor of the temperature sensor. So on like you pick two different CPUs but the temperature values you might read out are on a completely different location. Like Hardware Info will report the highest temperature value seen on the CPU but this could be on different locations on two different CPUs. So if you look at CCD1 and it's like on the bottom left, on this CPU it could be on the bottom right, the temperature sensor that's read out. So it's quite difficult to, with our like access we have, really compare CPUs like that. And talking about voltages, let's take a look at this as well. Again, in Cinebench R23. And honestly, I cannot see any kind of correlation with the co-voltage and the other parameters. So for example, the worst CPU will have an average co-voltage of 1.269 volt. And now looking at the CPU with the lowest core voltage, this has 1.254 volt. It will only be on average when it comes to the clock. Cinebench R23 is one thing, I mean I personally often use it for my reviews, I think other reviewers also love to use these kind of tools and benchmarks, but I guess what matters most is gaming performance. That's why I performed a benchmark run in Remnant from the Ashes, 720p resolution with an RTX 4070, simply to put a little bit more load on the CPU. And now on average we see the power consumption of 15 minutes, and this was on average 69 watt. Now looking to the total right, we can see a CPU with 60.8 watt, so that's a little bit less. But also in the center there is one with 85.7, and within these two CPUs, if we compare it, it's 25 watt difference. And the issue is with a CPU like that, that it's not only bad in power consumption, but at the same time also doesn't achieve a really high clock, which is again now displayed in blue. So the CPU with the highest power consumption at the same time also has a very low clock and performance in game. Which then again means if we compare these CPUs, you have one with a rather low power consumption and rather good performance, and then you have one with very high power consumption and rather bad performance. And to make this even more clear, we're talking about a difference in power consumption of whopping 41%. And this gets kind of entertaining if we now add in the FPS, which is lower on the bad CPU. Because then if we look at the FPS per watt, we see 4.26 on the good one and we see only 2.89 FPS per watt on the bad one. And again, to put this into perspective, I want to highlight we're only testing 13 CPUs. And within these 13 CPUs, we found two that have a difference in FPS per watt of 50%, which is quite insane. And I mean, if you would now get like 100 or 1000 CPUs, I'm pretty sure you would see even like higher differences, like worse CPUs and also, of course, better CPUs. And now you might say, oh my God, so Roman is trying to cause drama again, but that's exactly not the case. All of these CPUs are well running within spec and all of what you saw is totally expected. You have to keep in mind that we're looking basically at the garbage of the AM5 CPUs. The Ryzen 5 7600, if it like was maybe a better bin, could have been a 7700X. I also checked all of them are single CCD CPUs, you can like look underneath and check. But also, for example, we had 7700X CPUs that contained two CCDs that could have been like a 7900X but were too bad. And so yeah, we are looking at the bottom of the line CPUs. So I guess the, like the difference in like power consumption, like quality is even bigger than on the top of the line CPUs. For example, as I said before, the 10900K, which we tested several years ago, showed differences of about 20%. Here we saw differences up to 50%. And one of the problems about this entire topic is that, especially for us reviewers, it is very difficult because like as at a CPU launch, you will get one CPU and you might have a different CPU. So let's say we're talking about the Ryzen 7000 launch. And prior to that, I might have received some Intel CPUs for a different Intel launch and I'm like only getting one CPU each. Then the Ryzen CPU might be like insanely bad and the Intel sample was maybe insanely good. Then you certainly like suddenly have a big gap 
like in the results and on average it might be much closer together. And that's why you should never just look at a single CPU, a single review, never trust a single result and just look at the bigger picture. Make sure you check out multiple reviews and it also doesn't mean that the review is wrong. It's just a different result because he had a different CPU that he tested because I often read comments that yeah you're the only reviewer I trust. You should not do that. You should always look at the bigger picture and see what the, the entire thing is, what the differences will be between these CPUs. The same goes for you at home. So you might see a review, you might see a video like this from me and you will buy the same CPU and then you can claim, but my CPU is running 15 degrees Celsius colder with the exact same setup, same cooling solution, same everything. And again, that's to be expected because that's the differences you can see within the, like the CPUs. That's just normal. Because I often get emails like that, like emails, Instagram messages, whatever, saying that I had a Ryzen 3600 and now I switched to a 7600 and it's so much hotter, what am I doing wrong? That's not how it works. You just cannot compare like single CPUs, single chips. It's, it's not possible because you, you have so many different variables that you have no idea of and me neither. Like I cannot look into the CPU, I cannot see what kind of like sensors we're reading out. That's why this entire topic is pretty difficult and I just want to, to yeah, make it clear that these differences exist and they will have a significant impact on results that you can see online. One more thing, I mean we have plenty of uh, 7600 CPUs on here. I already gave five away on my Discord uh, channel to my Patreon supporters. We have five more that I want to give away here on YouTube. So you can find a link to Google Forms where you can just put your name and email address, put your new YouTube name in there and then we will give them out. I will raffle them in one week. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.